everyone now today we're gonna have a look at dates mtd dates qtd and dates ytd so if you are someone who is wondering about what this td qtd mtd ytd stands for then here's the answer mtd stands for month till date qtd stands for quarter till date and ytd stands for year till date now you're getting another question i know that is what the heck this till date is and what all these functions are going to do about okay don't worry i'm going to explain each of these things in step by step manner first of all i'll take you to the excel where i would help you to get the clarity on this td concept then i'll take you to the power bi and i'll help you to implement this thing with the help of an example so let's jump to the excel workbook over here let's say you are working in a supermarket or maybe in any company where you have transaction amount for daily basis right on daily date trans date over here and here you have the amount okay so let's say it is 1st of jan 23 and on 1st jan 23 the total transaction amount was 900000 for example on 2nd jan 23 the total transaction amount was somewhere 600000 for example now let's say if your boss asks you what is the mtd value as of today which is 2nd jan so that will be nothing so to calculate the mtd for 1st of jan what is the mtd value that is going to be as it is whatever was 1st of jan whatever the amount was for 1st of jan mtd value will remain same then for 2nd of jan what will happen is the sales value or the amount for 1st of jan plus the amount for 2nd jan okay or you can also say the mtd amount for previous date till previous date plus the current date okay and now you see it comes 15 now on 3rd of jan what's gonna happen on 3rd of jan 23 let's say it is 700 000. then mtd value will be 15 plus this 7 which is 22 so 15 means the sum till date starting from 1st of jan until current date whatever the total sum is that is going to reflect over here all right so this is what mtd is called and if you say over here 4th jan let's say 4th jan 23 then this and on that day let's say you have this many this much of the transaction amount then mtd value is going to be this i just hope that it is clear to you now the moment month changes for example let's say uh let's let's continue this till you know 31st of jan okay let's continue this till 31st of jan it is somewhere here let's let's continue till that point okay and here i'm just quickly going to produce this value 1 to 10 over here and let me just continue with this all right and then this so like what you can see is it keeps on summing up the values for example over here you see 50 48 then it comes 54 because 48 plus 6 is 54 54 plus 1 is 55 it keeps on accumulating right you can see that it is not it is doing nothing but just accumulating the amount okay now the moment you reach to the second fib it resets so again sorry not second fib but the first fib itself which means that uh, the moment months changes the moment months changes the value goes to be the same just one second let me do a paste special otherwise rand between keeps on changing the values okay so the moment months changes the value in mtd also gets reset to the original transaction amount of that particular date in the new month again when you jump to the second fib over here 23 and let's say you got 700,000 again over here then it will be nothing but the sum of uh, MTD value for the previous day plus current sales amount which is 8 plus 7 which is 15 again if you are going to third of fib let's say third fib 23 over here and you got something 600,000 and then the MTD value will be 2100,000 I just hope that it is clear to you. So this was MTD when it comes to QTD. So what happens the accumulation of the value continues till the end of the current quarter. For example, if accumulation is happening for quarter one, 
that will then it will continue till the end of the quarter one the moment it jumps to quarter two the value gets reset same happens in what ytd so in ytd the accumulation continues till 31st of december and the moment you it, it jumps to the new year the value gets reset okay so this is how it happens if i have to show you an example so here we got an example now have a look on here i have got three values mtd qtd and ytd that is based on the total sample value and total sample bill and over here the date which we have so out of the date i have separated month quarter and year now if you have a look at total sample value total sample bill so for all of these three it is same because it is very first day of the year hmm? So for month also it is the first day, for quarter also it is the first day and for year also it is the first day. When we jump to the second date, the value for all three is going to be same. So the value for all of the three will continue to remain same till 31st of Jan. But the moment we jump to 1st of Feb, you see the value for MTD gets reset to the original one, which is this value, the original value. But for QTD, it continues to accumulate. For YTD also, it continues to accumulate because over here, QTD, Q quarter is not ending. Quarter one continues. For YTD also here, at this point, year is not ending. So that's why it continues. Now, if I go to the 1st of March, no, 1st of April, you see over here then what's happening the value for mtd and qtd both resets to the original one but i'm worried i just jumped to somebody some somewhere else just give me one second i'll quickly come back to that particular part let me take you to the april over here it just keeps on switching here and there right so here so what you see over here is quarter is changing hence the value for value for this particular mtd also resets because month is changing and value for qtd also resets because quarter is changing but value for ytd does not resets because year is still the same now when you jump to the 31st of december then let's see what happens i'm going to go to 31st of december Look at this and just after that on 1st of Jan 2022 what is happening the value for all the three is getting reset to the original one because at this point MTD by default month is ending quarter is also ending and year is also ending right so you see this is changed reset to original now if you are continuing the fiscal year then again the scenario will be different okay so I just hope that you got the clarity on TD part what does td means td means till date and till date means whatever the day you are standing right some of the amount starting from the first into that interval for example if we are talking about month mtd then first date of that month qtd first date of that quarter ytd first date of that quarter sorry year starting from that till that point where you are standing the summation of all these values will be considered as td now let me take you to the power bi over here i'm going to create a graph so in in this i have this particular data right here you see i have the date here i have total sample value i'm going to use this one now i'll quickly jump over here and i'm going to create a bar chart over here and for that purpose i'm going to take this date all right and the sample value i'm going to take produce over here now let me just do this thing here you can see the data for three years here i have kept the slicer for the filtering purpose and i'm going to expand this to the months okay now you see this is showing the monthly data for each of the uh, total for each of the month okay now what i need to do is i need to create a measure so one thing which you should bear in mind if you are working on this kind of problem statement you should always it is always safe to have another table created for date so how to create calendar table for that i have a video separately created right i'll give the link into the description section just have a look on that okay so if you come back over here and you see i have two tables one is calendar which has complete date and then the another one is complete sales data and if you go in model view here what i have done is i have created the relationship between both of these two basis on the date column okay now i'll come back over here next uh, next step is to create the measure for MTT dates MTT 
if I have to say it correctly, very, very correctly. I think I already have one. So I will first delete that so that it does not create any sort of confusion. Okay. You have to, you'll have to bear with me because my system is a little slow. I'm going to delete this. All right, that is gone. Now I'm going to create another measure. And that measure will be named as, let me say, dates MTT. And over here, I would require to use calculate function because I need to first sum all the values, transaction amount, and then I'm going to put filter. You see, if you want to understand calculate function, again, the video is, link for the video is in the description section. Just check it out, okay? And over here, I'm going to use dates, MTT, and into this, the column which I require to use is from calendar, and that is date. Now, this is done. And let me hit enter. Now let's just see what's gonna happen. Into this, I'm going to remove this total sample and I'm going to use this dates MTT. All right, now over here, what's gonna happen is, I'll just come back over here and let me just create this. Now what do you see over here? It starts from 1st of Jan, right? And continues to sum, sum that up till 31st of Jan. And on 1st of Feb, it resets to original value, which is one again, right? And again, it continues to sum it up. If I just scroll it right, you can see it. What is happening, right? Now, I, I hope you have understood this MTD part, okay? Next thing which I'm going to do is create the same for QTD and YTD. Two more measures I'm going to create very, very quickly, and that is for QTD and YTD. <clears throat> so for that, again, I need to go on tables, right on three dot, and then just click a new measure. As soon as I do that, here is what I got. And then I'm going to say dates QTD. And for that purpose over here, again, I'll use calculate sum. And from here, I need to take this then over here i need to say dates dates qtd and into this what i need to use is calendar date all right this is done then next thing which i need to create is next one i would require to create is for ytd so what i'm going to do is to save the time i'm going to copy paste the formula okay and into that i'll just change some particular things for example instead of qtd i'm going to say ytt ytd and over here dates qtd instead of dates qtd i'm going to choose dates ytd all right and then this is it now the next part which i'm going to do is i'm going to you know change the uh, change the value into this particular graph okay let me come back over here and over here i will just remove this and i would use qtd part all right now let's just see how is this showing now what do you observe over here you see january february and march it continues till march and then it starts from again it resets on april right you see it is changing right so i hope you have understood it same happens for year till date which is YTT, right? So now if you see this, this will continue till 20, uh, December 2021. And after that, it will again start, you see over here. Now, if I have to take it one step back, now this is giving the clear view. So you see, this is for 21, 2021, this is for 2022, and this is for 2023. So this is how you can use MTD, QTD, and YTD in your visualization as per the requirement. I just hope that it was clear for you to understand just in case if you get any doubt, put that into the comment section. I'll definitely try to help you out. Until then, happy learning. Wish you very all.